Hey there, everybody. I hope you are still in one piece as you have to head back to the reality of work after the holiday weekend. I'm Topher Goggin, and fortunately, I've got just the thing to help you out, a new episode of Not Your Mother's Goose. And we've got a lot of fun today. First and foremost, we are just minutes away from announcing the winner of the Tournament of Disney Sidekicks. The matches have been played, the final votes are in, and a champ will appear just around the corner, if that means anything. But that's not all. Today's show is jam-packed with other fun, too. We're going to fire up the way, way back machine with Captain Kangaroo. We'll get some horrendous parenting advice from the folks that wrote Hush Little Baby. And we'll place a plea to our friends at Pied Piper Pest Patrol. On top of that, Andrew Mitchell returns to close out the show with another Rapunzel's Jukebox song. Most people want to spend their Labor Day weekend in Margaritaville. Andrew just spent his in Wonderland, and he'll be here to sing about it. Before we formally get started, though, I promised you details about the new and improved Not Your Mother's Goose store, or if you prefer the Goose Crap store, that's running at NotYourMother'sGoose.com now. For the first time ever, you can get the original Not Your Mother's Goose book this show is based on, complete with Rick Cunningham's hilarious illustrations, directly from us. On top of that, we now have a series of note cards based on his designs that are really wonderful. If you haven't seen these designs, you really do need to check them out. We've got Santa picking the wrong time to land on the Three Little Pigs roof and go down the chimney. We've got Mary had a little spam. We've got Old McDonald struggling on Wheel of Fortune after only buying vowels. They are really fun, and they're cards that you can use for anything. Thank yous, Christmas cards, just to send a note, whatever. There's a bunch of options, so you can pick out your favorite design, or you can get yourself a variety pack with a little bit of everything. Here's the best part, though. To get this started, and more importantly, to thank you for listening to the show for so long, I have set up a special coupon code for show listeners. If you enter GOOSE, just G-O-O-S-E, in the coupon code box at checkout, you're going to get 40% off any order, period. There's no minimum, just anything you want, 40% off. Now, it is only good till the end of September, so you need to act quickly. And there is one proviso, it doesn't apply to t-shirts, We've got some really great t-shirt designs, but those are separately fulfilled by a company called Tee Public, so I don't control the pricing there. They often go on sale, pay attention to that, but I can't give you a discount code for that. Otherwise, though, everything else, 40% off is there for you. I would really appreciate it if you'd go check it out. NotYourMother'sGoose.com, just look for the store right there. The code is Goose. Thank you so much for giving that a look. Okay, enough of the advertisements. We need to get you a winning Disney sidekick. That is up next, right here on Not Your Mother's Goose. All right, I won't continue the tease any longer. Let's get to the results in our tournament of Disney sidekicks. When we last talked, we were down to eight contenders. Genie, Timon and Pumbaa together, Iago, Mr. Smee, Olaf, Tinkerbell, Baloo, and Maui. That next round, which pulled in 595 votes, was Excitement Central. After that, a bit more like Blowout Central, but we'll get to that in a second. Timon and Pumbaa stepped on the gas, uh, perhaps literally, but that was not enough to knock off Genie, who cruised on to the next round with 68%. Meanwhile, the voters perhaps were not thinking ahead in the villains bracket as they sent Iago through over Mr. Smee and straight into a rematch with Genie now without Jafar's assistance. You can probably guess what happened there. We'll get back to that. The other side of the bracket was, however, much more interesting. In the smallish division, Tinkerbell never really seemed to recover from our panel's backlash following her win over Edna Mode in round two. She ended up trailing Olaf throughout a 59% to 41% loss. Then we have the largest bracket finale, which was the match of the tournament, number one Baloo against number four Maui. I have to tell you, I seriously thought that The Rock would just raise an eyebrow and Maui would send the big bear back to the banana aisle here. And for a while, that's what it looked like was going to happen. Baloo led early, but Maui battled back. And on Thursday of that week, Maui took the lead. The advantage, though, did not last. Must be that Coach King Louie called a timeout, told Baloo to take it one vote at a time and just focus on the bare necessities, and Disney's own Major Ursa did just enough, escaped with a victory by five votes, 300 to 295. That's how close it was. That brought us to the semis, where Baloo again outperformed my expectations, but this time came up short against Olaf. That wasn't before one of his fans, however, got into a trolling war online with a group of Olaf supporters. 
well, either it was a fan or maybe Baloo supporting himself from a burner account, but somebody said, it would be good to have a big bear as your best friend. That goofy little snowman wouldn't be very good in a fight, and he would melt the first time it gets hot. Can't argue with that logic, but the voters disagreed. Olaf moved on in that one with a hard-fought win. Things were not so hard-fought in the Genie versus Olaf battle. I kept refreshing the results whenever I could, and that was enough to see Genie leading 49 to nothing and 88 to 2 along the way. In the end, it was a route that is just unheard of in a semifinal. 93% of the vote for Genie to send the squawking parrot back to the Tiki Room in disgrace. So that brought us to the championship, Genie versus Olaf for the title of top overall sidekick. As we've done in the past, we opened things up for listener comments supporting their votes, and they delivered. Here's a few of my favorites from both sides. Olaf's ability to stay cool in heated circumstances is a characteristic that is needed in a sidekick, a leader in the making. Unlike Goofy, who is satisfied with his station in the Disney world, Olaf was born in the cold adversities of life. Genie, however, lived in a very nice lamp. A little cramp, no doubt, but not to be compared to the harsh conditions of Arendelle. Another voter said, Why Olaf? Because he's that friendly, inflatable health care companion. Getting good and free health care is something very important to the world, and companionship is something we all want and need to make us feel like we've got someone to be here for us. I'm definitely with you on the second part of that. Had not thought of uh, Olaf as my new pharmacy, but maybe that's something I should consider. Another one says, that's what friends are for. No, wait, you've got a friend in me. That's wrong. Friends on the other side. No, thank you for being a friend. No, 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 we're not that old. Ah, got it. Never had a friend like me. Genie rocks. And then I think we can probably summarize the two voting camps best with these two comments. One person says, some people are just worth voting for. And someone on the other side said, don't get me wrong. Olaf is cool but nothing will beat phenomenal cosmic power. In the end, it wasn't that close. Phenomenal cosmic power dominated. Genie started fast, stayed out front, and it never changed. By the time the polls closed, 73% of the votes pointed in Genie's direction, and he was officially your number one Disney sidekick of all time. It's frankly hard to argue. Four wins in the tournament, all with at least 68%. And the truth is that we almost kicked him out before it started because we thought he would win too easily. With that, though, we are with that, though, we are officially out of wishes and another Disney tournament has come to a close. Thank you so much to everybody who voted over 3000 votes along the way and to the members of our expert panel who did another snap up job with a segment last time. Also, a thank you to Herb Leibacher from WorldOfWalt.com. He helped us promote the tournament again, printed recaps each week to all of his fans. That was much appreciated. We'll take a break from the tournament world for a little bit, but I think there might be one more in the future, so stay tuned. For now, though, congratulations to Jeannie, your runaway winner on the Tournament of Sidekicks on Not Your Mother's Goose. Captain Kangaroo. The whole idea on our show is to revisit the stories and entertainment of your childhood, and as we head towards the fall, we're going to take a good look at the world of kids' TV. Of course, childhood happened at different times for different folks, and some things just didn't stay popular for very long. I could do a segment on He-Man that would go over huge with my cousin Derek from last week, but I'm not sure how far that audience extends past him. At the other end of the spectrum, however, we've got Captain Kangaroo. If you were born between, say, 1850 and 1975, you probably grew up with your old buddy Bob Keeshan. I should pause for a second to point out that I did not watch this show as a kid, but I've never let a lack of knowledge shut me up before, so why start now? Nonetheless, I acknowledge that if you've got old recordings of Captain Kangaroo on your 8-track or your Betamax, you're probably going to find plenty of errors in what I'm about to say. And while we're speaking of errors, let's start with the captain's self-proclaimed name. Because as far as I can tell, the old Cap is not captain of anything, and he is definitely not a kangaroo. If you were applying the logic of Barney the Dinosaur and thought, oh, it's probably a show with a purple kangaroo, you're going to be a little disappointed. From what I understand, instead, Captain Kangaroo was envisioned like a daily visit to Grandpa's house. And if that's right, 
Whoever wrote that pitch must have had a grandpa who moonlighted as a circus ringmaster and went to the same barber as Mo from the Three Stooges. Also, that grandpa must have had some very interesting neighbors. Let's just look at the crew of folks that routinely came to visit the captain. You've got Mr. Green Jeans, who was at least more accurately named, but also Mr. Moose, Uncle Backwards, Dennis the Apprentice, the Banana Man, Mr. Bainter the Painter, and down at the end of the line, like on the Naked Gun, Dr. Joyce Brothers. And I'm not making that up. The show, believe it or not, aired on CBS opposite the Today Show on NBC. That's right. If it was 1981, your choices in morning TV were Willard Scott or Captain Kangaroo. Also, the captain had more guest stars than Murder, she wrote. Phyllis Diller, Bob Newhart, Joan Rivers, you name it, they all showed up. Though I suppose it was probably less risky to say good morning than take the chance that Jessica Fletcher was going to figure out that you offed somebody. That being said, if there ever was a special called the Captain Kangaroo Murders, you can bet they'll be committed by dumping ping pong balls on someone's head. Summer is coming to a close, but the news continues to happen. Not our news, of course. That's not happening anywhere, but we'll still report it to you. Let's take a look. Seven dwarfs visit kindergarten, but only one claps during If You're Happy and You Know It. My Bonnie fails polygraph during overseas vacation. And while we're on the subject of travel, here's our lead story. Aladdin and Mary Poppins to collaborate on new flying carpet bag. Look out QVC, a new entrepreneurial tandem is coming to the airwaves with a revolutionary new product. With financial backing from Shark Tank's Lori Grenier, Aladdin and Mary Poppins have joined forces to change the travel world with their new flying carpet bag. Poppins has long been a trendsetter in high-capacity luggage, as overpackers everywhere have fallen in love with her handbag capable of holding a large mirror, plant, hat stand, decorative floor lamp, and, if needed, a small Oldsmobile. What folks haven't loved, however, was the need for a forklift to carry it. Well, not anymore. Thanks to a new partnership with Aladdin, Poppins has reformulated her bags out of decorative carpet from Agrabah, meaning the giant bag will fly by your side with no need to lift a finger. Pack whatever you want, capacity is still unlimited as you take a stress-free stroll to a whole new world. Despite the hype, not everyone has been impressed with the flying carpet bag. Numerous product testers warned against packing breakable items, with one saying that the bag's constant swooping and looping broke her grandmother's vase. Another suffered a torn rotator cuff after trying to hold onto the bag as it took off, and said he would probably stick to safer methods of flying in the future, like an umbrella. Time now for a break, or in this case, let's say a passing pause. You'll see. Is your pad perpetually plagued by petulant pests? Proclaim, the pest-proofing payoff you've prayed for is present. It's Pied Piper Pest Patrol. At PPPP, Pied Piper Paul Peters plays a pretty piece to parade pains from possums to paper wasps on a polite passage to paradise. Our premium plans provide progress for a petite payment, and we promise punctual proof of proper performance. Push aside preferences for Peter Piper and his purposeless pepper-pickling procedures. Pick Pied Piper Pest Patrol and pronounce peace out to your problems today. No, I mean now. Wait, uh, how about uh, uh, promptly? Oh, there we go. Back here on Not Your Mother's Goose, that's Cousin Trish for Pied Piper Pest Patrol, which is a good time to point out that Trish is short for Patricia. It's a good fit. Now back to the newswire. Paparazzi photograph Air Bud taking leak on fire hydrant. Egotistical Dumbo wonders when partygoers will finally discuss the elephant in the room. And speaking of stories with pachyderms involved, Animal Fair cited for safety violations. If you're looking to go to the Animal Fair, you'd best hurry, as the birds and the beasts could be on their way out of town after receiving safety violation citations earlier this week. I've never seen anything quite like it, said Enforcement Officer Clark Thomas, who issued a total of 37 infractions to the traveling group of animals. This crew is rowdier than when I cited Baloo and King Louie for noise violations back in the jungle. I'm not even sure who's in charge. Maybe the big baboon. He at least had his hair combed. 
Thomas detailed a lengthy list of violations, including claims of an intoxicated monkey performing a balancing act on the trunk of an elephant with hay fever. It reportedly did not end well, and the monkey couldn't be reached later for comment. Rumors also persisted of a flea and a fly trapped in a fireplace that only escaped when the chimney proved defective. According to Thomas, the show will be allowed to continue performing for now, but if he hears about any weasels getting popped, he's shutting them down for sure. Hush, little baby. If there is one thing we are all about here at Not Your Mother's Goose, it's calling out the ridiculously bad parenting in fairy tales. You've got Maurice getting himself lost in the woods and caught by the beast, Sleeping Beauty's folks totally dropping the ball with the whole spinning wheel thing, to say nothing of all the single dads who seem to shop for stepmothers down at Wicked R Us. Today we're going to look at yet another disappointing performance, this one from the folks in the Hush Little Baby lullaby. Their goal is simple. It's the same one that was in the book that Samuel L. Jackson read that rhymes with Row the Truck to Sheep. The plan to accomplish this, however, is an outlandish litany of defective gifts that no kid wants anyway. Let's think about this. Shut up, kid. I mean, sorry, hush little baby. Don't say a word. Mama's going to buy you a Nerf gun? Some Legos? A Barbie Jeep? No. Mama's going to buy you a Mockingbird. The only way this kid's going to shut up is if they get so mad that they decide to give you the silent treatment after this gift. But of course, hold the phone, because it might not even be a functioning mockingbird. We're only two lines in, and the parents are starting to hedge. Now, now, if by chance this mockingbird doesn't sing, then we're going to swap it out for a diamond ring. But before you get excited, or start hoping that the bird doesn't sing, realize that the ring is probably brass, and it quickly gets swapped out for a crappy looking glass. If you don't Alice your way through the looking glass and it gets broke, then you end up with a stupid billy goat, which doesn't even rhyme. The goat gets downgraded to a cart and bull, surely the dream of every two-year-old, and then we start worrying about if the cart and bull turn over, which reminds me of all the times that the drunk kids operating the Sooner Schooner at Oklahoma football games end up tipping at cattywampus right at midfield. It actually gets worse from here. The tipped-over cart and bull turn into a dog named Rover, but he won't bark, so then we end up back at a horse and cart, which is definitely that same cart from before repackaged with a new incompetent animal. And we know that because the horse and cart fall down, at which point we finally surrender and go to the cop-out, oh, you're still the sweetest little baby in town, which is what you normally use when Amazon doesn't get the birthday present here in time. So here's the deal. Lullabies are just bad news, because remember, it's either this, or they're throwing you in a cradle on top of a tree that's going to fall down before the song is done. So please, just do us a favor and show the duck to sweep. The Book of Dumboba Fat. We're back in the land of movie before and afters today, and just as I promised last time, we're doubling down on Star Wars following up Wookiee of the Year from last time. The Lucasfilm folks never are too shy about repurposing their IP over to Disney+, and that brings us to their latest offering. Instead of the Book of Boba Fett, it's the Book of Dumbo Buffett. If you're not familiar with Boba Fett, he's a Star Wars bounty hunter that works for Jabba the Hutt. He's the one with that silly-looking helmet that looks like it has a mail slot instead of eye holes. But as fun as it would be to put Boba Fett into the circus, for our story today, we'll follow a half-elephant, half-bantha as he leaves the circus world behind to try bounty hunting. After a comedic scene of trying to squeeze that helmet over his giant ears, dumb Boba Fett grabs a blaster and sets off on a new career, hunting down folks for the equally wrinkly Jabba. Dumb Boba Fett wishes to be trained in the ways of the Force, but like Luke Skywalker in Episode 5, lacks the confidence to get his X-Wing, or in this case his whole lumbering self, off the ground. Recognizing the utility that would come from having a flying elephant on staff, Jabba tries to send him to train with Yoda. Yoda, however, is on vacation visiting Bird on Sesame Street, so dumb Boba Fett gets assigned to a squeaky mouse-sized droid named Timothy 8 instead. 
Timmy 8 begins Dumb Boba Fett's training by giving him a supposedly magical porg feather, telling him it's loaded with midichlorians, and that will help him fly with ease. Soon, Dumb Boba Fett is a lean, mean, ear-flapping machine, flying all over the galaxy. Jabba then gives him his first assignment, heading back to the circus to hunt down a family of force-sensitive tightrope artists performing under the stage name The Skywalkers. The show, of course, culminates on a long, narrow walkway, this time even narrower than usual, and since this is Star Wars, you know somebody is going to fall off and die. Dumb Boba Fett confronts his target, a lesser-known Skywalker cousin known as Dan Skywalker, whose day job is working in the Rebellion IT department. The two engage in a dramatic battle hundreds of feet above the big top, with the elephant nimbly doing force-aided backflips while wielding a lightsaber in his trunk. But alas, it is Dan who gets the upper hand, as Dumb Boba Fett gets distracted by Jar Jar Binks telling jokes in the crowd and tumbles off the high wire towards his doom. Realizing he left his magic porg feather back on the ship, Dumb Boba Fett resigns himself to a tremendous splat in the center ring. Fortunately, at just that moment, Timothy pops through the mail slot in the helmet, explains that the whole midichlorians thing was a big George Lucas mistake, and strongly suggests that the big lunk get his ears flapping in the very near future. Dumb Boba Fett does just that, soaring to safety, then quitting his employment to join Dan Skywalker and the rest of the Rebels. Now if they just teach him how to fly over the Death Star and drop some manure in a thermal exhaust port, we'll be in for one heck of a sequel for The Elephant Strikes Back. Not only are we close to wrapping up today's show, but we're closing in on the end of summer as well. The good news is we won't get there before we pay one more visit to the tunes on Rapunzel's jukebox. Andrew Mitchell has been back in the tower with his mixer, and we've set him to work on one of the all-time make-you-happy songs, Margaritaville. The only difference is that this time we're not looking for salt shakers with Jimmy Buffett. Now we're tracking down rabbits in Wonderland while Andrew plays the trombone and the recorder. So raise your glass of tea, because here it comes, Andrew Mitchell in Wonderland, here on Rapunzel's Jukebox. Spotted a rabbit, but I couldn't grab it. Shrunk myself down, chased him right through his hole. Ran the whole race thing. Her Tweedledum sing Sorry oysters, but you're gonna bore Weirdos are everywhere out here in Wonderland Searching for that rabbit, but he won't halt Dodo may claim that all he needs is a flame, but I'll go. This won't be my fault. Talk to the flowers, such as your cat powers. Tea party time, what a hell of a crew. Guess it's my own birthday Whatever that's worth, hey Hatter and hair, well they've had a few Weirdos are everywhere out here in Wonderland Met a dormouse, bombed on liquor and malt Can't even feign this caterpillar is sane Now I think they're all odd by default
queen told me, hey, stop. Threatened a head chop. Croquet time thought I wouldn't get home. Had to find a defender. My gosh, what a bender. Don't let Lewis Carroll put you into his tone. Alice in Wonderland and through the looking glass. Those two books, they put me under assault. Some people claim the Queen of Hearts was to blame, but you know, it was Lou and Walt. Yes, and some people claim the Queen of Hearts was to blame, but you know, it was Lou and Walt. A visit to the folks of Wonderland on Rapunzel's Jukebox, another favorite on Not Your Mother's Goose. Remember that if you see the Chatons performing anywhere out on the East Coast, you can go and check out Andrew Mitchell performing real songs that likely won't involve little Tommy Tucker. That brings us to the end of today's show, but be sure you come back next time as we've got a special episode planned devoted to the PBS shows of your youth. We'll head to the neighborhood with Mr. Rogers and around the world with Carmen Sandiego, plus a few more, and your favorite news stories and other fun. Also remember that you can really help me out if you check out the hilarious cards for sale on NotYourMother'sGoose.com in the brand new store there. We've got some of Rick Cunningham's funniest stuff. These cards are all blank inside, which means you can use them for Christmas, for thank you notes, pretty much anything else. As a huge thank you for helping me test it out, use the code GOOSE, G-O-O-S-E, and you're going to get 40% off. It's a one-time deal. It's only going to be in effect till the end of September, so don't wait. But I really would appreciate it if you check it out, and I think you'll love the cards. That's it for today. Thanks so much for listening and for voting in the Tournament of Disney Sidekicks, where Genie has routed the field and claimed the overall crown. Until next time, remember, the goose is loose. We'll see you soon with more here on Not Your Mother's Goose.